I was able to save over $100,000 in just a couple years. And no, it wasn't just by coincidence. Sure, I had a great high income salary when I was out working on Wall Street, but honestly, I could have blown all this money away very, very easily. And I'm not saying that I was perfect or amazing at saving money. No, not at all. A lot of these little money saving tips are things that I learned through trial and error. But through this, I was able to recognize my own bad money habits and break away from them. In this video, I'm gonna go over nine bad money habits that most people have that are really holding them back and I'm gonna go over how we can break free from them. Bad money habit number one is getting into the revolving cycle of debt. 66% of Americans are in some sort of debt right now, and this has quite honestly become the norm. It has almost become trendy to take out debt to pay for things, even for small things. Now where it gets scary is when you don't actually have the money to pay this debt off. So you start borrowing even more money from the bank to pay your debt, but you're getting into more debt, putting you into this very dangerous dangerous cycle of debt. Now this is a very detrimental money habit because the more debt you take on, the higher interest that you have to pay and the more money you owe. And it's just this vicious cycle that keeps going and going. And banks count on this. They want you to borrow more money because interest is how they make money. This cycle becomes really difficult to escape. And another thing that adds on to this burden is number two, which is just paying the minimum amount required on the bill or on the debt. Paying the minimum required on a credit card or a loan just prolongs the debt and also accrues more interest. So in order to avoid this mistake, make sure that you are able to pay off your bill in full every single cycle. And if you can't afford to pay it in full every cycle, then you have an even bigger problem, which is number three, living beyond your means. Living beyond your means is basically when your spending exceeds the amount of money that you're making or your income. So it means that you actually cannot afford to be living the life that you currently are. You are just spending your money thoughtlessly and you are relying on debt to keep going and buying the things that you wanna buy. You should be able to pay for all of your expenses except for things like a mortgage on a house, like an entire house or you know your car in full at the minimum every single month to make sure that you are in good financial standing. Again, when you're spending more money than you're making, it just puts you back into that vicious cycle of debt and interest. A major reason why people end up in this cycle is because of poor money habit number four, which is that they do not budget. Not having a budget is so detrimental because you're literally just spending your money very blindly and thoughtlessly, and you have no idea whether or not you're making good financial decisions. Budgeting is the process of planning on how you will be spending your money. This plan helps you understand where your money is going and ensures that you have enough money for the things that you need and want. Having a budget means that you know exactly how much money is coming in every month and how much money is leaving in expenses and also how you are allocating all of your money. Budgeting can help you control your spending, save money and avoid going into debt, which is what happens when you don't have a budget or a plan in mind or when you have absolutely no idea how much money you're bringing in and how much you're spending. Budgeting allows you to set aside money for important financial goals like buying a house or going on vacation or saving for retirement and it helps you to make good financial choices and helps you to achieve your long-term financial goals. A common budget that people follow is the 50-30-20 rule which is where 50% of your income goes towards your needs. So these are things that you cannot live without such as you know your housing, your rent, car payments, utilities, food, clothing, things of that nature. And then 30% goes towards your wants. So things like shopping, going out to eat, going on vacation. And then the last 20% of your income is allocated towards paying off any additional debt, uh, saving for an emergency fund and investing. If you're getting any value from this video at all, it would really mean a lot to me if you went ahead and hit that red subscribe button. This, this way you'll be notified anytime I upload similar videos. Poor money habit number five is not having an emergency fund. Emergency fund is a savings account or an investment investment account that is specifically set aside for unforeseen circumstances or emergencies. This could include things like sudden medical bills, car repairs, getting laid off, home repairs, your washer, your dryer breaks down, you need to buy a new one or get it repaired. These things can be costly. The purpose of an emergency fund is to provide a safety net for you so that you don't have to rely on credit cards or taking out loans in difficult times. Because again, based off what we just learned, getting into this cycle of debt 
pet is extremely vicious and dangerous, it is recommended having at least three to six months worth of your full living expenses in your emergency fund. Ideally 12 if you can pull that off and work towards it. This way, if you unexpectedly get laid off from your job, which honestly is happening to everyone these days, at least you won't be as stressed about finances for the next few months while you look for another job. Having an emergency fund will ensure that you are prepared for any financial challenges that come unexpectedly. Mistake number six is not putting your money straight away into your savings after you get paid. This kind of goes hand in hand with what we just discussed uh, about the emergency fund and this is almost like the concept of paying yourself first so when you get your paycheck before you even take money out for your expenses and start paying bills automatically allocate 10% of that paycheck to go into your savings account and most banks let you do this completely automatically so you just never even see that money and that's how you want it and you might say like oh I'm living paycheck to paycheck I can't afford 10% of my paycheck to go into the savings trust me when you take that 10% out first and you don't even see it you will work with what you have and this is where you need to cut down expenses live within your means and really budget until you can get into a better financial position where you don't really have to worry about this so much also yes right now you will not be seeing this money at all the 10 percent, but you will have peace of mind knowing that you have a big chunk of cash in your savings account or investments in an emergency fund for when you need it or down the line in retirement. Core money habit number seven is impulse buying or buying expensive things unnecessarily. This is where budgeting and again, sticking to your budget can prove to be very helpful. We have fallen into this trap, especially in America of overconsumption, and it is just wild and we just want more. And we think that having more things will make us feel more happy and fulfilled. Social media has also made this issue even worse where you are bombarded with influencers who are trying on their 15 different outfits with their variety of makeup and their 35 designer bags and their shoes and whatnot. It doesn't help the situation because you are seeing all of these material things and feeling like you absolutely need to have them. And if you do not have them, you cannot live. We get this feeling of, wow, I need to have that in order to be happy. I'd say about 99% of the time, you do not need that thing to be happy. And truth be told, if you just sleep on it for a couple days, chances are you will probably just forget about it. You have to fight this initial urge and impulse to want to buy right away. Just think about it for a couple days at the least and then see if you even remember that thing a couple days later or even the next day. A good thought process could be, do I really love this item or do I just like it? Is it just cute? Is it trendy or will it last me? Will it actually make me happy for a very long time and add value to my life or am I just gonna forget about it in the next few days after that initial dopamine wears off? Can I pay for this all in cash right now? If you answer no to some of these or all of these, then chances are that you should not be buying it. I promise you, you can live without it. Poor money habit number eight is keeping up with the Joneses. This one is so bad for our mental well-being and it's this concept of keeping up with the Joneses. It's this constant and what I mean by that is that it's this constant need to compare to our neighbors to our friends and see what they have and see what we don't have. It makes us feel like we are behind in life or that we need more things to be happy in life or appear to have a certain sort of status in society. For example, let's say you have a social circle of four other couples and two or three of the other couples in your group just got a new car. This is going to put pressure on you to want a new car as well. Even though the car you have is perfectly fine, there's nothing wrong with it, but you just feel like you need a shiny new car to be part of the group, be socially accepted, be cool, <laughs> feel important, whatever it is that you wanna call it. It's this social pressure that we put on ourselves to impress others and to externally give off the impression that we are successful and doing well in life. This in turn means that you're spending money on things that you don't necessarily care about or truly value. Look, I get it, this is a hard one, but just remember that you are enough True happiness does not come from material things and comparison is truly the thief of all joy. So don't do it. Get comfortable in your own skin and know who you are as a person and stand your ground. Think about the types of things that genuinely make you happy and truly add value to your life. Even if that looks different from you than it does for everyone from everyone else. And again, knowing and sticking to your budget will help with this and it will help you to not spend money on these sorts of unnecessary purchases. And guys, I go through this mental exercise 
size all the time. In my friends group here, a lot of the girls in my group carry designer purses and they're beautiful. There's no doubt in that. At the core, I know my entire life that I have not given a crap about designer purses. I, purses, I would choose to spend that money on things like food and travel over and over and over again. I genuinely don't care about purses, but from time to time I find myself on these designer websites looking for a new handbag, thinking that, oh, you know, it can't hurt to have one, or maybe I should just have one. And then I have to stop myself in my tracks and be like, hey, actually at the core, I don't give a crap about this. <laughs> I never valued purses. I don't care about the designer label and that's just who I am as a person, right? That's just me. And for me, it's a complete waste of money. It doesn't align with my values or my core beliefs. And I also feel like I would just truly regret it even if I did go ahead and splurge on a designer bag. So this is just where I need to recalibrate my mindset and say, hey, this isn't you. You do what makes you happy. Don't fall into this trap of doing it just because everyone else is doing it. And you have to do that sometimes. You have to give yourself that pep talk, pep talk sometimes and that's okay. For money habit number nine is that you're not investing your money to make it grow even more. Investing your money is so important because it allows you to build wealth over time and gives you financial stability. By putting your money into investments like stocks, bonds, and real estate, you are securing yourself against inflation and making sure that your money maintains its value and purchasing power. Investing can also help you save for large purchases like a home down the line or if you have kids and you wanna send them off to college one day, investing can help you to reach those financial goals. If you wanna invest but you have absolutely no idea where to even start or how to do it, then I highly suggest you check this video out next where I go over exactly that. So I'll catch you in the next video.